And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today, we are talking about two more mages for Mage Wars Academy. The monk, who does not do much uh, magic, really. Just goes around in fighting, a little bit of magic. And then the elementalist, who is all magic, all the time. So let's take a look at what comes in both of these sets. I also reviewed the Necromancer and the Druid, and that's another video going up today also if you want to see those two. Let's get started. Okay, so first we'll take a look here at the Elementalist. The Elementalist comes with a bunch of freeze and burn and corrode tokens, as you might imagine. But more importantly, the Elementalist comes with these four glyphs. The Air Glyph, the Fire Glyph, the Water Glyph, and the Earth Glyph. Now all these glyphs start deactivated, but anytime you cast a spell, a spell that matches the air, fire, earth, or water, you will activate them, and you can deactivate them to get plus two armor, heal two damage, have a plus four effect roll, or add a plus two attack dice. So that's pretty awesome. He's also trained in all four of these spells. However, living objects cost triple, even if they're novice. So you don't want to have anything living in his elemental's desk. He has the Amulet of Attunement, where you can deactivate one to get two mana. The Elemental Staff here, which gives you defense, and you can only use it if you're being melee attacked. You spend one and you deactivate a glyph, so you have to have glyphs for this to work. The Wand of Ice and Fire, which is not quite as good as the song, I suppose. And here you can put Burn or Freeze. It's actually pretty cool. You know, I will burn you, I'll freeze you. That's a pretty neat idea. And Dragon's Mantle, which you can pay one mana to deactivate your Fire Glyph if you do put a Burn condition on the attacker. Again, you can see these are all very specific. You need to be used on this particular mage. So this set comes with the Beam of Frost, which can freeze somebody. The Cone of Frost, which can also sweep and freeze someone. The Gale Burst, which does extra damage against... Um, the flying creatures, as does the Twister. Those are the only four of these attack spells, but you realize that this Elementalist can use all the attack spells that are in all the sets pretty easily, and I've been waiting for this to be able to do that. Also, I believe this is the cheapest legendary creature in the game. Well, kind of cheapest. It costs three, but it costs one every, every turn. But still, that's pretty neat to get out this little sprite here. Galgamon! We also have a Magma Sprite. You'll notice that all this stuff is non-living, so it can fit in the deck. An Acid Ooze here, which ignores non-critical damage from attacks. And the Rock Golem and the Ice Golem. Again, thematically, this is a lot of fun for me to have golems of different types here. Although, again, flame attacks do well, but you just put the different ones in your book. Your opponent's using flame, don't bring out the Ice Golem, bring out the Mud Golem here. And um, you put charge, you can put charge counters on this, increase its life by two, and melee plus one. And then the diamond golem, which you could break up and make a lot of money on it, I suppose. Defending, it prevents three damage, so very good. And then the tide elemental and the frost elemental. Of course, the, the, the little immune here to, to flame stuff. I'm not immune, but dead, flame can hit this thing, but still 23 life, and it rolls five dice. Oh my goodness, it's awesome. More elemental stuff. We got tar traps and frost traps. You put free, two freeze conditions on a creature. Here's a deep freeze. You, you put it on somebody here. The neutralizing mist gets rid of uh, corrode conditions. A very, very specific thing, I guess. But if your opponent's using poison, good for that. You know, you can stop them. A disperse, a rapid dismantle, an upheaval. And then we have some conjurations here. This is flame immunity, gives you one mana, a mana shard. You can freeze someone's weapon, a volcano. This is pretty neat here. It's, you ha it has two tokens on after second tokens out. Then it makes it, a, it makes it attack to everybody there. So you just run from it. Of course, you would probably not put your creatures there. I, I don't know. I like the idea of just summoning a volcano from the ground. A thunderstorm, ice spikes. Hellscape, which seems a little dark, but okay, you can put this with a necromancer, and a dense fog. Objects in this zone cannot be targeted by anything but themselves. So, uh, the what's interesting about the Elementalist here is that not only do they have all this cool stuff that comes with this set, but you can think about the combination that you can use with all the stuff in the other sets that are already out there. Okay, so now let's take a look here at the Monk. Now, the Monk starts with t two key tokens here. And you begin the game with these. During the upkeep phase, you get one, and you're going to be able to use these to augment certain spells. So here also, if you put on the Ring of Key, 
when you when you channel this you can pay one mana and get two extra key here's this you get a defense but you can only do this if you spend two key so you can see this here there's going to be a lot of cards in this set that you will never use in another set you'll only ever use them with the monk uh, the devout robes here you get plus one armor but you can pay x key to remove a condition on this mage and X is the condition's removal cost. Here are the Dragon Lance. You can spend a key to give it plus six, so it's definitely going to burn your opponent. Um, this guy here, he can meditate to give you two key. Here you can do meditation on your own to get three key. And then there is a ton of attacks that use key. So this is three sweeping, but you can pay two key to make it four. Here it's a four attack, but you can pay three key to make it do critical damage. And you... Um, Fist of Iron cannot gain the effect of the melee plus X trait. Well, fine. Fist of Lightning. If it's successful, you can pay X key. If you do, one non, the non-mage defender becomes inactive. Here you can do a flying sidekick. Three. But you can pay two key. It does two extra attack. Here, if it's successful, pay two key. If you do, plus six to cause them to stagger. Projected Palm. Pay two key. It becomes unavoidable. So those are pretty much the cards that involve the key. But... That's how that works. Then there's other things in here. Not many uh, uh, other people. This is a, ma a mage who mostly fights in his own. He has a couple pupils here, has a hired bodyguard, um, and the shadow assassin, which is pretty cool. Can't be targeted while active, and gets the piercing plus two with backstab. Then we got a few other normal cards. Distraction, Disperse, Crumble, Reprisal here, you get Counter-Strike. I like having Counter-Strike. Arcane Webbing. Here you can make someone miss with the thing. I like that. I mean, it's a good use to stick this with the Monk. Martial Mastery, this one can only go on a Monk. And when you do this, you can reduce uh, a Martial Spell by one cast. So that's kind of a useful thing. Again, you feel like that one should go in this set. When you control the fewest creatures, probably will be you as a Monk. Your melee attacks cost one less attack die, or the melee attacks roll one less against this mage. Then we got the Golden Shield and the Gladius. Gladius is like, if this mage is level 5 or greater, gets an extra attack die. That's awesome, but again, I'm not sure that this is only a level 4, right? Yeah, level 4. Well, whatever. And this mage gets the Aegeus 1 trait while being attacked by a ranged attack. So that's good if you're being attacked by ranged stuff. Monk's very, very straightforward. That's what comes in its set. All right, no question, Elementalist, my favorite mage of all time. Love this one. Love what it can do. Love the glyphs. Love the fact that I can just have tons of attack spells and tons of creatures. There's just so much variety. I mean, yes, you can't use living creatures. Well, you can, but they're expensive. Non-living creatures, but there's so many of them. Oh, it's so much fun. The only problem with this one is you can't just buy this one, I feel. You get it, and you're like... Well, I want to use stuff from all the other ones. Although, I don't think I'll use anything from the Monk in the Elementalist. Uh, but all the other ones, like, oh, well, this one had, you know, there's a fire. I'll use fire spells. This one has water. I'll use those. Oh, I love this one. The Monk is not my style at all. But I get what it does. I like it. You know, I mean, I like everything in Mage Wars. But uh, this one here is the whole, my mage is the fighter. I'm going to come in and fight off all the sorts of things. And, you know, there's... I think it's the, really only the second mage to do this sort of thing. I get that, and I get that some people will really enjoy that. And if that's what you want, you want your mage to be the tank and with the chi. My, I guess my biggest thing about this one is it's very, there's a lot of cards in here very specific to this mage only. Of course, there's lots of cards in all of the sets, but this one feels the most isolated. There's, when I build the deck here for the monk, I'm pretty much going to be pulling mostly cards from the Monk set. While the Elementalist, I'm like, what is the pool? And that's what I like. I like having that pool to build my spell book from. Love this one. But they're both good in their own way. And that's what we have here. The Elementalist and the Monk for Mage Wars Academy. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Actually, Elementalist, excellent.